now ladies and gentlemen it is time for me to call upon for the industry keynote on role of living labs in fostering innovation we've got mohammed abdalal the head of digital experience and innovation cost a smart cost joining us well mohammed abdalal is the founding member of the king abdul abdullah university of science and technology where he joined the institution during its construction phase in 2008 mohammed abdal is responsible for managing the newly established digital experience and innovation function with a primary focus on leveraging technology processes and people to create a smart digital experience across the university and city of course mohammed has previously managed the university's it infrastructure function including systems servers storage data center facilities and an extensive network that spans the sprawling community and housing facilities Mohammad oversees strategic digital transformation plans and initiatives including partnerships and collaboration with leading industry players to utilize costs unique setting as a launch pad and a living lab for pilots and creative concepts well now it is time to call him on the screen thank you so much Mohammad Abdal for joining us today once again thank you thank you very much and again good afternoon good evening to a lot of you Um, I'm going to share my screen, and I hope this would work well. Uh, here we go. I hope you can see the screen. Excellent. So uh, today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about living labs and the concept uh, of what that means, uh, and I'll walk through a couple of examples of what we're doing here at Kaust. Uh, by no means uh, did we get it all right. We're still figuring this out, as many of you are. and we're open to ideas and again we're open to partnerships and collaborations so in my mind uh, let me walk you through my my slides in my mind what is a living lab uh, so to begin let me tell you how i personally think about innovation and how to keep up to date and how to even survive the current world we're in first you need to experiment experimentation means trying things out and if you don't try things out you're going to be set in kind of where you are and and you're going to be limiting yourself to what comes next you need to fail the word failure is a is a big word especially in the culture around here how could i fail that's a bad thing that would make me look bad in front of my management well i'm telling you if you don't fail you're going to try to get everything to work correctly and you're going to fail at the end so better fail fast fail quickly learn and adapt you need to engage and partner uh, engage and partner means use your ecosystem of people societies user communities industry partners collaborators and let them be part of your living lab uh, focus on the user and the customer this is a very crucial thing if you keep that focus in mind you'll get things right and focus on the mindset and culture because without the mindset and culture a lot of things we talk about here in the slide will not necessarily come come quickly or come fast So a living lab basically is a combination of people, place or places, systems and values that embrace all the above. This is kind of a summary of what a living lab is. Let me give an example of what we're doing here at Kaus, uh, King Abdullah University of Science and Technology. If you don't know about Kaus, you will learn about it in a second. So Kaus is on the western side of Saudi Arabia on the Red Sea. I use this slide quite a bit with international audience. I realize a lot of you here are from the kingdom, so this may not be new to you, but we are a bit north of Jeddah, uh, 100 kilometers north of Jeddah on the Red Sea, beautiful campus and beautiful scenery. Uh, our community of Kaust is a city. Uh, Kaust is not a university only. Definitely is a university, but it's also more than that, it's a city. Our campus is here on the map. Uh, we actually have a an academic area where research happens we have a town center where retail and kind of a community activities take place but living spaces are are here big area of living spaces and also a major area for partnerships and collaboration with our industry partners and innovation and startups so it's a living city and quickly in terms of numbers uh, this is even might be out of date but over 7000 community members We have school children, we run a city, we run the roads, we have police, security, fire, retail, restaurants, everything is also interconnected by a complete network. And again, it's a growing population uh, as we speak. 
uh, right now we can think of us again as a, as a 10,000 community member or so. That's the number you want to keep in mind. Uh, academically, we are focused on water, food, energy, and environment. And uh, we just recently added digital to it. Uh, our new president, uh, Professor Tony Chan, who joined us about two and a half years ago, actually put digital as an important element of the strategy. So in addition to you know the, the human aspect of water, food, energy, environment, Digital is a key role, and again, this kind of fits nicely in the discussion of the theme of the uh, summit and show today, and even our discussion in this session. Uh, technologically speaking, we have uh, supercomputers. Uh, we, we actually have the fastest supercomputer in the Middle East, uh, which was also the number 14 in the world was when it was released, and we're constantly refreshing that infrastructure almost you know, every, every four, four to five years. Uh, 3D visualization, global connectivity, we're hooked up uh, to the world by 10 gig networks, and actually we're adding 100 gig networks in the next few months. So we're, we're expanding our global reach by massive network pipes because research data is huge. And again, a lot of data intensive applications and visualizations are now part of what we do, augmented reality and other things, uh, and sensors as well. But let me get to the, to the important part. Uh, the word CalSmart is a brand we use CalSmart is a living lab. That, that brand entails a unique campus that we want to take advantage of. Uh, because we run a city that is a small city, we have full control on it, and we want to take advantage of that opportunity. And we want to facilitate experimentation. Going back to my first slide, we want to experiment. We want to do things and test and, and fail and learn and not do it alone. We want to do it with industry, with, with partners, collaborators in kingdom, out of kingdom, students, young, old, it doesn't matter. It's all part of the experimentation of a living city, a smart city to create a living lab where you can do AI, you can do augmented reality, you can do many, many things. Let me show you how, how we're doing that. So we, we chose to focus on the experience part of it. We chose not to be technologically driven. This might sound a little bit weird. So we're not looking at it from a technology perspective. We're looking at it from an experience perspective. Our city people go through multiple experiences. I'm not going to go through all the boxes in here, but it's sufficient to say dining and eating, somebody visiting KAUST, employees that already are part of our ecosystem, meetings, especially in COVID-19 world, mobility and transportation is a big thing for any smart city, events, students, it's an academic institution at the end of the day, and living, right, the, the community part of living. How do we tackle all these experiences and look at them from an innovation and smartness, but also from the user perspective? It's a very important thing that we don't want to begin with technology and drive forward. We want to begin with the user, what they experience, and then connect the dots of how to make that happen. So this is the very important kind of a view of the strategy of how we approach a living lab environment. <clears throat> we announce things publicly. So engage your community. So when we do things, we actually announce it publicly. We say anybody who wants to attend a session, sign up and attend. On purpose, we tap into the unknown expertise of the community. School children, by the way, our schools contribute a lot to this. So school children that are small young hackers join these sessions and professionals as well as spouses and others. So on purpose, we engage the community to take advantage of that uh, ecosystem. There's some fundamentals required, navigation, wayfinding, how to find your way around indoor, outdoor, a challenge. Digital twin is important. Identity management with a diverse community. Who is who? How do you give them access to what? Authorization. That's a challenge as well. We have 5G, we have LoRa, and we have the digital wallets. All these things are examples of what fundamentals are needed to make, make that uh, happen. And I'll be, again, a little bit very quick here, but we believe in, in, in mobile applications. Sorry, mobile applications are required. Uh, they connect all the experiences together. So a mobile app in your hand is a, is a one way to navigate experiences. Not the only way, but it is one fundamental way that connects a lot of things we do. So we're investing quite a bit of time and energy in designing mobile app driven by experience, not, not the other way around, not just a mobile app based on a big a big requirement. It's actually the other way around is how to engage 
design sprints and community to contribute to developing the, the mobile app. The way we do it, and uh, I'll build the slide all of it just for the sake of time. The way we do it is we would, we're not IT. We don't do it in a, necessarily in, a, in, a, in an IT way. We do it in a combination of technology, innovation, and you know design thinking approach. So we begin with ideas. We align people. We design think it, which is a technique that a lot of you know. We do hackathons, rapid development, quick, you know, quick releases, prototype something, get feedback on it, continuously reiterate through the process of feedback and prototyping, <clears throat> and eventually roll it out. If we decide to roll it out. Because if it failed, hey, we're good. We learn. We're happy. Failure is, is important. And we want to say, good, we learned. Let's not roll it out. Let's go back and do something different. So a constant iteration with marketing and awareness and branding being in the middle of this because it does create that visibility that we need to engage everybody else. So it's it's nothing nothing new on the slide. This is actually just our way of presenting it to you. Is uh, is is a is a is is a quick fast way to create concepts and put them out. They're not based on RFPs. They're not based on big tenders. They're based on small quick experimentations and testing. I want to give you an example because I do. I know I'm short on time. Autonomous mobility. So we began a journey of studying autonomous mobility uh, at KAUST to understand what does that mean for the future, you know, mobility options we have. We did not go and necessarily buy autonomous shuttles. We wanted to experiment with autonomous shuttles. We wanted to learn what it means to the user, the safety, the infrastructure, the connectivity, and overall experience. So we kicked off an autonomous pilot uh, back in December, uh, almost le less than a year ago. And it's, it's, we're looking at it from a smart experiences. We're looking at it as a research also for us, because our faculty and scientists are interested in this type of platforms, looking at it from an operational perspective. Can it run? Can it work? And also maybe an investment in micromanufacturing and other types of small factory ideas. We were the first in Kingdom to test autonomous shuttles in, in, in Saudi Arabia. And uh, we are running two suppliers, two shuttles, and an assessment for about a year. So we're actually almost halfway into it. We postponed some of it because of COVID-19, but we're halfway into the testing of the autonomous shuttles. You come to Kaos, you'll see them running hopefully soon as well. So with that in mind, we went through logistics of bringing them in here, <clears throat> infrastructure changes, mapping a route, training operators to ride the shuttle because it's, it's a level three autonomous. So it, it needs somebody on board for safety reasons. And SAPCO has been our partner in that. And we're also doing some marketing and, and, and creative uh, content just to, to, to kind of share the concept of what happened at KAUST with the rest of the world and the rest of the kingdom. And we're now working on, on, a, on a refresh of vehicles and a next generation kind of update, traffic light, connectivity, uh, smart virtual traffic lights, smart bus stops, and again, mobile applications in your hand to drive that. The key message here is experiment with bleeding edge technology, hook it up to user experience, make sense of it, learn, fail, bring your partners, bring your community to be part of it. And if it does really indeed make sense, start to roll out things slowly. We Again, we chose not to go and just purchase autonomous buses. It's not going to work. You need to go through a process of culture adaptation, you know, working through your, your ecosystem of health and safety, infrastructure, guidelines, policies, traffic rules, citizens, and how they also perceive these things. Do they like it? Are they concerned? Go through the process, learn, adapt, fail, and continue. Last example, because I will I'll stop here, smart home. We are now working on a smart home concept. We have existing 3,000 plus homes. And we're in the process of taking one of them. We actually took it already, completely demolish it, rebuilding it to become a smart home pilot. This is a collaboration between many, many departments at KAUST. We're supporting our facility management department in this because they are leading that effort. We're making a smart home concept to see, again, how does it work in Saudi Arabia? Heat, solar, energy, dust, but also technologically speaking, is it working system for people? Do people enjoy such a thing? Is privacy a concern? We're not the only one doing this in the world, not the only one doing it in Saudi Arabia, but we're doing it with an approach, again, from a resident perspective 
and what they want and feel, not from an infrastructure a uh, smart technology perspective. And we're building it around that theme of user centric. And again, we're adapting it to the in kingdom, you know, limitations in kingdom constraints on energy, heat, shading. Uh, you know, that this is kind of an environmental constraints that we have and we need to work from within this constraint. So again, an interesting opportunity on smart home and smart living uh, that is taking place today. Conclusion, and I'll stop right here. Kaos is a unique campus. We have living patterns for about 11 years now, or 12 years actually. <clears throat> so we have a society that wakes up in the morning, goes through a routine, comes back, eats, shops, uh, goes out, comes in, drives. So we have a pattern already, and we know it very well. Uh, we facilitate the, the, the experience integration and the work we do. And I'll end here by an open invitation to anybody on the call, anybody on the Zoom, to join our living lab, you know, come visit us. Hopefully, soon, because some some restrictions are still in place. Uh, collaborate with us, test, pilot, and learn together. So, open invitation. Happy to contact me, and we'll take it from there. I'll stop here. Thank you so much, Mohammed Abdullah. Uh, it, it's incredible to have you at the World AI Show once again. Thank you for your valuable time, and definitely, I'm sure the invite is going to be. Uh, very much accepted by all the attendees. Thank you for that. Thank you. Take care.